Bir Sports ekranına hoş geldiniz. Özel röportaj köşemizin konu Azvel'de. Daha önceden de tanıdığımız bu sezon Azvel'de oynayan Chris Jones. Chris, thank you for your time. Uh, it's lovely to have this opportunity to talk to you because you have a special story I want to hear about. <laughs> um, starting where? where do you <laughs> starting want to start? from. You know, starting from all at the top, actually, uh, how you started basketball and all. And uh, you're from Texas and you have lived your whole life there and went to college in Texas, uh -huh. actually, right? Yeah. Well, actually, um, yes, I did my first three years of college at the University of North Texas. Then I transferred my last year, Division Two at San Angelo State. Um, coming out of college, I didn't have a job, you know, to play overseas, uh, unfortunately, so I ended up having to get a regular nine to five job uh, to provide. I just had my first son. And so, I mean, just me being me, I had to provide for my family. And- um, What was that job? Uh, I was working at an ice company. And uh, it, was, it was tough, but I really, I really liked it. It was, uh, it was different for me because I wasn't expecting that coming out of college. Uh, you know, normally, you know, you think As a basketball player, you come out, you're going to get, have a job right away. So I kind of like took a different route. Um, I feel like it worked out for the best for me. Um, so yeah, I ended up having to get that job and uh, I didn't find a job until I think the end of November uh -huh. in Mongolia. Yeah. So like I said, I didn't know anything about overseas basketball. So I, you know, I didn't do any research on the country, the weather, anything. I just... I was excited. I packed my bags. That was the first offer you got, yes. right? Yes. Packed my bags and boarded the plane. And I get into Mongolia and it's freezing. I mean, it's super cold. And I have on a, a jacket similar to this. And everybody has these big jackets and they're looking at me like crazy, like, what are you doing? But like I said, I don't know anything about, you know, Mongolia or the weather at the time. So I'm freezing. I'm super cold. I get to baggage claim my bag's not there so it's it was it was a lot for my first experience you know you start questioning yourself like is this for me like you know i'm a million miles away from home and uh they took care of me when i got there uh, i was fortunate to um get clothes and stuff you know while i was there until my bags got there but um just being away from home you know without family and friends that first year was tough But my college coach told me, uh, you know, if you can make it through this, you know, your first year, you can pretty much make it through everything, anything overseas. And like now I walk into different arenas and, you know, see how big, you know, the stadiums are. And it's, I mean, to me, this is, you know, kind of my NBA, you know, just seeing the stadiums from where I was in Mongolia. But um, I feel like it's a great experience for me. And um It's been, it's been quite a journey. It's been quite a journey, but um, I feel like I'm built for it. Okay, you hadn't had it easy from day one, actually. Yeah, for sure. So, as you said, you did not do your research or, uh, you know, expect anything at that point. But once you got there, how did you build your expectations, you know, out of your professional career? What did you start wanting? Oh, uh, it was really just, uh, me personally, was discipline. Leaving high school, going into college, you know, you kind of discipline yourself about, um, you know, waking up on time for classes and for practice. Like, it's no, like your mom is not there to tell you, hey, you have to do this and that. So, like, just being out of a different country, uh, it's kind of just discipline myself. Uh, I didn't have, like, um, extra coaches to help me with shooting or, you know, somebody telling me, hey, you need to stretch every day or make sure you put the proper things in your body, you know, to make sure you can uh, produce, you know, daily, whether it's practice or games. So it's really just the discipline, um, just being strong, like mindset. And we were like, I want to say like, almost a whole day ahead. So when I would wake up, <laughs> my wife and, you know, my family back home were going to sleep. And when they were going to sleep, I was waking up. So that was tough for me. And like I said, I just had my first little boy Yeah. So it was like tough, like I couldn't really communicate as much as I wanted to, but um, we made the best of it, um, communicate the best that we could. Um, and yeah, like I say, I felt like that, that year was just kind of just like a discipline year for me. As you said, you've talked to your college coach. He was like a mentor to you, I guess, at this mm -hmm. point, because, you know, getting out of college and going into professional life, you know, 
not many players go to Mongolia to play. Yeah, so. yeah. I heard that before. But um, <laughs> yeah, that summer, I think he coached the national Swiss team before I went to did my senior year. And oh. like he, you know, he was just telling me, you know, kind of like the culture change over there. You know, like maybe you don't have the foods that you're used to eating, you know, back in America and stuff like that. So and that's another thing that was kind of tough to like adjusting to, like trying new things. I'm big on kind of like, I like this, and that's it. <laughs> so, you know, going there, um, the different foods, just trying different stuff. My teammates, you know, helping me like, ah, I eat this, but I don't eat this. So they was like giving me different types of stuff to, you know, try and stuff like that. So, I mean, uh, that was the biggest thing for me, just uh, trying to adjust to the different culture. But, um, you know, to get here, uh, it's been quite a journey. Yeah, from quite East Asia to Europe yeah, <laughs> hasn't crazy. been easy for you. Not at all. As you said, the cold greeted you at the airport, then the food was different, and that was all a process. But what was the hardest thing in life in Mongolia? Um, grocery uh, shopping. People always talk about this kind of stories. <laughs> uh, grocery shopping, now. Like I said, I'm kind of, you can kind of tell by the eye, you know, what you like and what you don't like. Uh, Google Translate helps you out a lot, you know, and um, of course, you know, your teammates, you know, some stuff that I just couldn't figure out. So my teammates would take me to the you know, grocery store and like, hey, if it says this and this, you know, this is that. And so, that, I mean, that was kind of the easy part. Um, it was different for me, like I said, the weather, also, you know, finding food. Um, get into practice and games were kind of tough because it's, it's so many people in Mongolia. It's, I think it's, you know, they have certain days, they go by like the license plate. They go by certain days where you can drive your car to keep certain people off the road. Oh. Yeah, so it's crazy. So I had to take a taxi every day to practice or games. And so, you know, if you normally you drive yourself, you can kind of estimate the time of, you know, when you're going to get to your destination. but. I always have to leave earlier. Well, and finding a cab yeah, is always a problem. Finding a taxi and, you know, kind of putting my trust in the time that they can give me to practice. So that I felt like that was the kind of toughest thing for me, just um, just getting to practice in games. That's definitely something I haven't heard before. <laughs> <laughs> what about Bursa? Uh -huh. And uh, you have a whole season here and you actually signed for another one with an option out for your league offer. Mm -hmm. And uh, you took that offer when it was time, but uh, how was that Bursa sports season? Uh, it was great, man. It was, it was a great experience for me. I've, um, no knock on the other leagues that I've been in, but the competition was amazing, you know, coming from, you know, Mongolia, Switzerland in uh, Belgium, so the, just uh, I felt like everything from the players to the, the coaches from the opponent's team, like the knowledge was just, I mean, the game was faster, Yeah. you know, guys were stronger, uh, the talent was just a lot better. I feel like me personally, I can adjust well, so uh, it didn't take me much to adjust, but uh, I was put in a great situation with my coach. Uh, the team that they put together that year. Um, you know, we didn't get the results that we wanted, but I think we were, due to COVID, we were at the time, we were maybe ninth or 10th place. Mm -hmm. yeah, and um, it was it was great for me. Um, the fan base, you know, the fans show major love to me and my family. Uh, it was like home, like you say, I signed another year mm -hmm. because I felt so comfortable and, you know, I felt it was kind of home away from home for me. So kind of going back that second year was like a no-brainer. Was Bursa the first place you had your family with you? They were also here with you. Yeah. And uh, how much did you like the Turkish experience when you were here? Uh, it was nice. Uh, like I say, you know, just kind of adjusting to the different cultures. Um, I liked it. Like, um, I mean, I, I don't know much. It's like home away from home, really. Um, <laughs> I think Finding the, food here wasn't that problematic for you. No, not at all. <laughs> Finding food was not a big problem here. Um, I have, it was a, it's a place in Bursa, it's a restaurant. It yeah. was kind of maybe 10, 15 minutes from my house. I, I'm pretty sure they took majority of my money. <laughs> for, me and my, for me and my family, uh, we ate there like all the time. But it, it was great. Um, and of course they had American food there, so that's why I was there all the time. But. Uh, it was great. Uh, the city of Bursa was great. 
like I said, it fits my personality. Small city, yeah. not much going on. Um, from the coaching staff to the, you know, the GM, the president, my teammates. Um, that was a new organization that wanted to do a lot, so there was a lot of excitement, I guess. Yes, and for and, and just the fact of them, you know, kind of, like you say, new organization moving up to take that chance on me. Um, I mean, I couldn't be more appreciative, you know, to that and organization. You had, you really got for actually, and took your chance in that position. You know, it took you like four seasons to get to that point. So how happy were you once you got that offer? Uh, super excited. Like I told you before, uh, I felt like, uh, you know, I belong in the position that I'm in now. And um, it took a while, man. It's, it, it was tough, like, you know, long nights. Uh, early mornings in the gym, but uh, I stayed the course. Um, I got to where I'm at. Uh, I'm still working, even though I'm here. Um, you know, the grind really doesn't stop. You know, and just not getting too high or too low, even though that I'm here. You know, mm -hmm. now continue to work and um, progress every day. Showcasing your talent in Maccabi was not easy because there were lots of ball handlers like Scotty Wilbeckin is of course the main guy over there. There was also Tyler Dorsey and uh, like De Bryan, like other well-proved <laughs> ball handlers. Mm -hmm. So what was that situation like for you in that Maccabi team? Uh, it was tough. Um, kind of knew going in, um, kind of, you know, show what I was capable of, but, um, you know, Limited on minutes, you know, your first year, you know, Euro League, you know, you kind of got to prove yourself of, you yeah. know, what you can do. And uh, like I said, I wasn't really able to, you know, showcase my skills due to the, you know, the good guards that we had there with Scotty, you know, Elijah and Tyler. But, um, I mean, I continue to work. And when I got the opportunity, I tried to, you know, do the best that I can. And, um, you know, grateful for the, you know, Maccabi organization once again taking the chance on me and um i mean now i'm here with asville you know trying to win as many games as i can and um not really worried about individual stats and stuff like that more so of you know how we do as a team and uh just work with what we have we ha we've had you know a couple injuries you know that hurt us but um the group that we have, you know, we still can do things. I want to ask about the life in Israel because every American player I talk to always says that it's the most Americanized place that yeah. they can play in and they feel the most comfortable in Israel. You say that Bursa was home away, away yeah. from home, but how was Israel? Uh, Israel was nice. Um, like I said, the fan, fan base was crazy. Like before I went yeah. there, I, you know, you know, going at this time, I know now to do my research. So. Uh, <laughs> You know, I went to YouTube and seen the fan base, like, man, it's, it's crazy. Like, I didn't really see, you know, much of them to, you know, kind of towards the, the end of the year, you know, due to the COVID situation. But the fan base was amazing. Um, the, the food was great. Uh, <laughs> like you say, it's really Americanized and, you know. Everybody speaks English, yes, so life yes, to get yeah. around is easier. easy. So, like, you know, being away from my family, if I'm on the road, I'm, you know, more comfortable with my family. You know, being there, my wife getting around, you know, mm -hmm. kids and stuff like that. So um, it's really expensive, <laughs> really expensive. That's the only thing that hurt me. I, I'm, I'm really cheap. I'm really <laughs> cheap. But um, other than that, everything was great. Um, the weather. I forgot to mention the weather. It's, the we uh, yeah, it's the warmest place Amazing. you <laughs> played Amazing. in. Amazing. All year round. Uh, the kids at the beach. Yes. The family over they there. They were there every day. <laughs> Every day, I got a break every day from my wife and kids. It was a nice experience, but like I say, your know, Tel Aviv is it's nice, but it's it's kind of out of my character. Bigger city, it's a bigger city, more crowded, so much stuff, social, you know, moving social. on. Yeah, I'm I'm really quiet, you know, kind of to myself, and um. That's why you liked Bursa better. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so, I mean, not being able to show your talents as much as you would in Tel Aviv, you got another opportunity in EuroLeague and Aswell made you this offer. And how did you feel at that moment? Because this is a, a great organization that has a great past, but they are new in EuroLeague and they want uh, to prove that, you know, this is the level they are in. Uh, once again, um, Tony Parker and... Um 
TJ Parker taking a chance on me. Um, you know, it's, it's crazy. Like you grow up watching, you know, certain point guards, and and now he owns the team that I play on. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. But um, were you starstruck when you met him? Honestly, I was. I'm not even gonna lie. Don't let him see that part of it. But um, <laughs> I would be too. Anyone <laughs> would be. Yeah, definitely starstruck. But um, like you said, the uh, organization is great. You know, trying to build something here and um, they felt like I was the guy to help them, you know, move in that direction. Um, it just speaks, I mean, of the work. Like you said, uh, you know, I re didn't really get as much of uh, opportunity that I wanted at Maccabi. And for them to take the chance on me to be their starting point guard, um, you know, with kind of limited time the year before, uh, it shows a lot. It, um, I was super excited, you know, when I got the call you know, um, about the offer. And um, I mean, from there, it was kind of no, no turning back for me. I kind of knew what I, already, what, what I wanted to do. Um, and due to the fact of, you know, Maccabi not picking up mm -hmm. the, my option year, uh, it was kind of a no-brainer for me. Yeah, I was going to ask about Tony Parker before you even mentioned it, but uh, you mentioned it. Tell me about it a bit more. You know, when he was there watching your practice for the first time, you know, how was the situation? Did you get excited? Because he was there, Tony Parker was watching. Uh, you know, you kind of get excited, but it, you're nervous at the same time. You know, it's the Tony Parker, you know, watching uh, the guy that can say, uh, okay, we, we don't want this guy anymore, you know, so... Uh, I was kind of nervous at the same time, but um, I mean, I was just telling myself, you know, just be yourself. Like, I mean, clearly, he kind of know, you know, what you're capable of and what I can do. So it's it's no point of me trying to show more or you know, kind of you know, be nervous about the situation. I was kind of you know in shock once you know practice was over, you know, and I shook his hand. So I, you know, I call everybody back home, like, bro, you would not believe what just happened, like. <laughs> so you know, it's like, hey, next time, you know, Facetime me or you know, take a picture with him, like. But uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's great, uh, but just to have somebody like that, um, and you know, he tells me all the time, you know, if it's you know something that I need or, you know, talk to him about something, you know, basketball-wise or you know, family or anything like that, you know, I can reach out to him, and uh, it's just great to have somebody like that in your corner. Definitely. And uh, they took an option on Costa Santo Tocumpo, who is a big potential. It's not just him protecting the rim well, it's Yusuf Afol is playing great too. So having bigs like this for guards like you and Eli, uh, how, uh, how is the connection over there? Oh, it's great. Um, like you say, you, uh, they both, you know, protect the paint for us. Uh, they give us a little different, you know, kind of game. Uh, you know, with coaches being so athletic and use, you know, being more uh, back to the basket, you know, post moves and stuff like that. So I feel like it's great to have that, you know, that balance between the two. Ellie is, you know, good, you know, scored is at every, you know, all three levels. At um, Now that he's injured, though, you're going to have lots more minutes, lots more responsibilities. So how do you feel about this at this part of the season? Oh, uh, I mean, like I told you before, I'm, I feel like I'm built for it, but mm -hmm. I, got, I got teammates that got my back as well. So I don't feel like I have to put so much pressure on myself or, you know, too much on my back because I know these guys can pick up the slack. You know, it's a, it's a lot of slack, you know, losing Ellie. But, um, I mean, it's five on the floor and, you know, five on the bench. So I feel like everybody can, you know, take it up a notch and um, mm -hmm. just all of us can come as one and, um, you know, kind of try to fill that hole. So far this season, I mean, you have played really good games at home. I mean, you started uh, the season beating the last champion FS in like round three. I guess then you played Kazan, Ceseka and won against them too. So at home, the season has been very generous to you, I guess. But how many wins uh, I mean, you might get until the end of the season? It's really competitive this year to do, you know, to go to the playoffs and it's really tight. Yeah, the, you look at the standards, standards are pretty, really, really <laughs> close. But, um, I mean, of course, our goal is to make the top eight. And, you know, not just the top eight to win as many games as you can win, possibly. We want to show people um, that we're a fighting team, that, you know, we never give up. Um, no matter where we finish, 
But um, for sure, we want to finish top eight and make the playoffs. That would be a great goal for us. You know, everybody's more comfortable at home. So, it's, I mean, it's tough, but um, we just got to lock down. I mean, we, we've done it. We showed, we've shown that we can do it. You know, we just got to be more consistent with it. And I feel like some of the games that we have lost that's close, yeah. you know, on the road have, you know, come down to details. And, you know, no excuse or anything, but we have a lot of young guys, you know, I mean, including myself, like with just the experience of EuroLeague and it, it shows at times and, you know, especially playing these high level teams, they punish you for every mistake. So it's really, I mean, it's tough. Like you really can't make mistakes, especially at this level. And um, I mean, it's tough, but uh, like I said, we just got to continue to keep fighting and, you know, get over that hump. Well, uh, at this level, who's the player that you like to play against most or who is it that you hate? to play against most? Um, like to play against? I can't pick one person, really. Um, like I say, it's, especially at the point guard position. I mean, you got, I mean, I feel like that's one of the most important, you know, parts of a team. And it's not really a particular person that, you know, like I say, night in and night out, Let I'll, me ask about some particular people okay. <laughs> then, because we always talk about FS having the best guard duo with Mitzic and Shane Larkin. So do you love or hate to play against them? Um, I mean, I like playing against them, but I mean, like I say, you also hate playing against them because the connection that those two guys have, you know, is amazing. You can tell they've been playing with each other, you know, for years and not just those two, but the whole, the core, like, I mean, it's tough. Like I say, especially playing like, These guys just won a championship, so you know they they know what it takes to win, and you know, like I say, the mistakes you know they're going to punish you for them. So it's tough to you know. I mean, like I say, all teams, night in, night out. I mean, you can't really make mistakes, you know, against them. But for sure, that duo is a duo that I hate playing against. <laughs> but I also like it just the uh, the competitiveness and. You know you have to bring it offensively and defensively against those guys. Yeah. Well, looking at the teams, actually, who do you expect to see in the final four once you think about, you know, these high-level teams? Um, it's one team. It's only one team that I really see final four, well, that I had a dream about seeing, and that's Asheville. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but seriously, uh. I would say top four teams. I would say Barcelona. Yeah. Cheska, Madrid. It's harder I, this year. To I pick. feel like I have to put the defending champions in there. <laughs> I mean, like I say, it's it's not really about you know how you start the season. It's kind of how you finish, and I feel like now they're kind of like they're starting to click a little bit more. And it's, I mean, I feel like it's the perfect time towards the end of the season going into playoffs. So I'm, I'm going to say Ephes. That's what they did last year. So yeah. <laughs> let's see. Thank you so much for this interview no and sparing some time to us. I really enjoyed it a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Christians, Azar Reportage, Kuşamızın konuydu. Şimdilik burada sohbetimizi noktalandırıyoruz. Hoşçakalın.